Hello and welcome to our lesson on right triangle trigonometry. Everything in this lesson will be based on the fact that we will be given a right triangle. So if you're not given a right triangle, then none of this will apply, okay? Only right triangles in this lesson. Let's get started. Uh, first, we have to be given a right triangle. That means one of the angles has to be 90 degrees. And you need to know that the angles will be designated as capital letters. So, for example, this could be angle A, angle B, and angle C. Capital letters are angles. Lowercase letters are sides. Across from angle A would be side A. Across from angle B would be side B. And across from angle C, which in this case is the right angle, would be side C. And so that's one of the basics that you need to know in right triangle trigonometry is that capital letters are angles and lowercase letters are sides. Now, sometimes in the right triangle, you will have an angle designated as theta. So in this particular case, our angle A is designated as theta. You could also have angle B designated as theta, and that's going to tell you the angle of reference. It will be either A or B. Normally, they do not designate the right angle as theta. So it will be one of the two acute angles. Now, what makes the location of theta important is that it determines which side is opposite and which side is adjacent. So wherever theta is, if you go opposite of theta, that will be the opposite side. The other side that makes up the right angle, by the way, those two sides that make up the right angle are called the legs. The other leg will be the adjacent. The side that is across from the right angle is always hypotenuse. So whichever side does not run into the right angle, that's going to be your hypotenuse. And that's how you designate the sides of your triangle as opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. It all has to do with which angle is designated as theta. Now that we've covered those basics, we can talk about Chief Sokotoa. Chief Sokotoa is going to tell us how to set up our three basic trig functions. Okay, so we're talking about sine, cosine, and tangent. Here's what the chief says. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. So if you can remember how to spell Sokotoa, then you can remember how to set up your three basic trig ratios, your three basic trig functions. If you think you might have trouble remembering how to spell Sokotoa, maybe get a tattoo or something. I don't know. Now that we've got the three basic trig ratios, we can find the other three trig functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Remember that those trig functions are the reciprocal functions. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. And then that gets us all six trig functions, all from knowing Sokotoa. And don't forget that theta is important, the location of theta, because he determines which side is opposite and which side is adjacent. Now, the other key piece of information that you need to have is Pythagorean theorem. And you can either know it as opposite squared plus adjacent squared equals hypotenuse squared. Or 
a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Either of those two is fine. I flip back and forth between which one I use based on whether I'm doing a, b, and c or whether I'm just working with opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. And I got to tell you that right there, that's the fundamentals. That's pretty much it. The only thing that we need to do from here on out is maybe look at a couple of examples. So let's drop down and look at the two ways that your examples will be given. Usually there's, there's two ways that you'll be given as problems. You will either be given one angle say that they give you angle A is, I don't know, 25 degrees, and they will also give you a side. Say they give you side B is 10 centimeters. That's one way that a problem will be given. The other example, the other way that they could give you a problem is they could say, okay, side A is 10 inches, and side C is... I don't know, 35 inches. And they will give you only two sides of the right triangle. Now, what they're going to ask you to find in both cases are all of the missing pieces. Let's do the first example first, and then we'll do the other example to completion and show you how these work. The first thing that you probably want to do is make a list of all of the other pieces. So angle A, angle B, and angle C are needed. I've got little b, so I need little a and little c. Oh, and by the way, in this particular setup, they would have to tell you which angle is the right angle. It's either going to be angle B or angle C. 95% of the time, it's going to be angle C. So I would highly recommend... The next step is to draw a picture where we've got our right angle. Remember I said that normally the right angle is going to be designated as angle C, and the other two don't matter. So we can say angle A and angle B, and then you want to input the given pieces. So angle A was given to be 25 degrees, and little b, remember, is across from big b, was given to be 10 centimeters. So do you see one of these pieces that I need to find is basically already given. Angle C, we know, is 90 degrees. And now for a cool piece of information, angle A and B the other two angles in the right triangle have to be complementary. That means they have to add up to 90. So if I know angle A, I can find angle B by subtracting from 90. And so that's going to give us angle B is 65 degrees. So all of a sudden, I've got all of my angles and now all I have to do is find side A and side C. And this is going to come down to a personal preference at this point. You're going to have to decide, do I want to use angle A as my angle of reference, or do I want to use angle B? I'm going to go with angle A as my angle of reference. What that means, that means that I'm saying that angle A is my theta. And that's going to determine which side is opposite, which side is adjacent. And then I know that this side is hypotenuse because it doesn't touch the right angle. Now, that's important that you designate the sides correctly in order to determine which trig function to use. Okay, so now tell me, which side do you want to find first? Do you want to find little a first or little c first? Okay, I hear you. Let's find little a. You're thinking alphabetical order. Let's find a first. So the opposite side, since it's across from angle a, that would be side a. Notice I know the adjacent side is 10. 
So if I'm trying to determine which trig function to use, it's going to be based on the side that I'm looking for and the side that I know. And I can make this rhyme if you want me to. Okay, I will. So to determine the trig function you need, watch this. You label the side you're looking for. You label the side you know. Then talk to the chief and he'll tell you where to go. So we're doing opposite and adjacent. If I go talk to the chief, opposite and adjacent says to use tangent. Do you see how cool that is? Label the side you're looking for, label the side you know, then talk to the chief and he'll tell you where to go. We're using tangent of theta. Now remember my theta is angle A, which we know is 25 degrees. Tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. And now I've set up an equation that I can solve for A. All I have to do is multiply both sides by 10. So whatever 10 times tangent of 25 is, that's going to be my answer. And so I'm going to pull up my calculator and do 10 times tangent 25. Make sure you're in degree mode. And then they're going to uh, have to tell you where to round that to, since this is not a whole number. And let's just assume they said round to the nearest tenth. So this would be 4.7. And the units in this case would be centimeters. Okay, and that takes care of little a. Now, remember that we do have a right triangle and that Pythagorean theorem applies. So at this point, we can say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I can find side c by plugging in for a and b. Now, Side C is going to end up being an approximate answer since we had to estimate side A, and that's okay. 4.7 squared plus 10 squared equals C squared. And then taking the square root of both sides to get C, pulling up my handy dandy calculator, square root of 4.7 squared plus 10 squared. And you see I can input that all at one time on my calculator. And then rounded to the nearest tenth again would be 11.0 centimeters. And that takes care of side C. And now I have found all of the missing pieces. Angle B side A and side C. And so that's how you would solve that particular setup with Sokotoa and Pythagorean theorem. And now let's move to our other example. Here we're given two sides only and no angles. Remember I said that they will have to designate which angle is the right angle. 95% of the time it's going to be angle C. So we don't have to find C, it's going to be designated already. What we are going to have to find is side B, angle A, and angle B. The easiest of those three pieces to find is going to be side B, since we can use Pythagorean theorem. So again, that's going to be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then I can solve for B, moving the 10 squared over. Let's see, with my calculator, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. That's going to be the square root of 35 squared minus 10 squared. 15, and I'm going to leave that as 15 square root of 5 because that's exact. So here again, we would have to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the squared. And that's going to be 15 square root of 5 
Exactly. And so now little b is found. And now if I draw a right triangle, where c is the right angle, remember I said the other two sides, whether you designate one a or b, is irrelevant. And so this time I'm going to say angle A, angle B, like so. And let's go ahead and put the numbers in that we know. Of course, we know angle C is the right angle. Across from angle A is going to be side A. And across from angle C is side C. Oh, and now we know little b, so across from angle b is side b. All you have to do at this point is determine which angle you want to find first. You want to find angle a first or angle b first? Okay, I hear you. You want to do them in alphabetical order again. Okay, so since I'm going to be looking for angle a, that's going to be my theta. And remember, remember, the location of theta determines the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Across from theta is opposite. Across from the right angle is hypotenuse. And the other side has to be the adjacent. Now, you get to determine which trig function you want to use. Since we know all three sides, you can use any one of the three trig functions, sine, cosine, or tangent. Which do you prefer? Okay, again, I hear you. You want to use the sides that are nice whole numbers. I feel you. Okay, so if we're going to use the sides that are nice whole numbers, then that's going to be the opposite and hypotenuse. And then you would go talk to Chief Sokotoa, and he's going to tell you opposite and hypotenuse, well, that's going to be sine, right? Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And so we can say sine theta, remember theta is A this time, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and then if I move the sine to the other side, I'm going to be able to find angle A. That's going to be the inverse sine of 10 over 35. And if you want to reduce that, you can. 5 goes into both of those. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 7, 35. That's not necessary, but you can reduce it if you want. And then if I go to my handy-dandy calculator... We're going to have the inverse sine of two sevenths. And since that's not a nice whole number, they're going to tell you where to round to. Let's assume they want to round to the nearest tenth. So that would be 16.6 degrees. And then that takes care of angle A. And I already know angle C. Guess what's super easy? Angle B. Because angle A and B, remember, they have to add to make 90, right? Yeah, that's a pun. So let's go 90 minus angle A. And then convert that to a decimal. And that'll be angle B, 73.4. And that takes care of all three pieces that I needed to find. And knowing how to set up these problems using Sokotoa and Pythagorean theorem, it's going to work for these examples as well as any application problem that you need to work, okay? So that's going to do it for this lesson. I think I covered everything that you need to know to be successful in this section. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.